Hello and welcome to ESG A Bridge to Action presented by Price Waterhouse Coopers in association with Money Control. And today we are going to discuss a very important aspect of ESG, which is the G part, the governance part. And the topic of discussion today is better governance for an authentic identity. And the two gentlemen who are going to throw more light on this very important point of ESG, Nilanjan Roy of uh, Infosys and Vivek Prasad at PwC India. Gentlemen, so good to have you on the show. But before we go on this very interesting discussion, here's a special message on sustainability. The top five global risks have now shifted from economic focus to environmental and societal. We all know that disruptions are a reality. Tech Mahindra is amongst the few companies in India that has prioritized ESG at a very early stage and recognized business profitability with sustainability can be our motto. Our journey towards sustainable practices started about a decade ago. We have committed to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030 and 50% renewable energy mix by 2025. My first question to you, Vivek, while we talk about the ESG standards for the companies, climate consciousness is far and wide known and many uh, big announcements have been done by many big companies. But corporate governance standards, that's also something that has seen a huge amount of clamor, especially from the investor class lately. Where are we on the journey when it comes to the governance bit of ESG? And do you think enough has been done on that front? Thank you, Nisha. Thank you so much for the question. Thank you uh, you for having me over. Uh, you actually absolutely rightly said uh, ESG, whether it's environment, social or governance, has been taking a lot of mind share over the last 12 to 18 months and very rightfully so because that is the only way that organizations and, and companies can drive sustainable value creation. Uh, you know, matters pertaining to the E or the environment tend to be a long, lot more long drawn, capital intensive and also there's always a tangible measurement that can be attributed to it and hence always kind of gets covered. But I think we have to focus on an equal balance on, on both the social and the governance aspect as well. So as you said, focusing on the G and the governance, what, what really is governance? It's, it's really about transparency. It's about ethical business conduct. It's about how we actually conduct our business and how do we do that? It's through you know, the board, board compositions, the committees, uh, the, the policies that we actually put in place around internal controls and processes. I think the other very important thing to keep in mind when we actually put together some of these committees and forums is to actually look at the composition of these committees. And I would actually say that, you know, there's empirical evidence uh, to demonstrate that organizations that have invested and paid a lot of attention on the G aspect or governance have been adequately rewarded uh, in terms of the trust, trust and the confidence that the larger stakeholder group, including stock markets, attribute to them. That's right, Vivek. It has to be much wider and the ecosystem needs to be created. Let me ask Nilanjan now. Uh, Nilanjan, welcome to the discussion here. And of course, Infosys has been a stalwart. It's a truly global company. And many of these aspects must be coming naturally to a business leader like Infosys. Tell us about some of the tenets that are followed in your company to reach the highest levels of corporate governance standards. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Nisha. So I think this really goes back to the founding of this company itself by the, in 1981, when the mission which was set out by the founders was that we need to earn the respect of all our stakeholders, right? And it was the key word was stakeholders and not shareholders. Because I think the realization was that we, are, of course, are there for an existence to earn profit, but also profit with a purpose. And therefore, we need to be very cognizant of the larger ecosystem which we operate in, which is, of course, shareholders, it's employees, it's about our clients, it's about the society at large, and of course, the environment, right? And of the vendor community. So all of these you know, uh, 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 forces which interact with an organization, you have to be cognizant of that 
and at one level deliver value to all of them uh, and not just think about stakeholders. And over the years, if you've seen the examples of you know what we've done, uh, really, you know, the Infosys Foundation as an example, you know, way back, it's only been 25 years when you know CSR was not even something which was being mandated, but this is something we said is important to do uh, to look at more marginalized uh, you know, sections of the society. Uh, way back in 2010, actually, we took a carbon neutrality goal, you know, when the world was not even looking at these sort of targets, uh, that by 2020, we will become carbon neutral as a company. And actually, we achieved that in October of 2020, one of the first companies uh, in the world uh, with a UN Climate Change Award in our, you know, given to us uh, as well. Uh, of course, from a governance and transparency, you know, one of the first companies uh, which you know was voluntary disclosing on various gaps uh, are listing on the uh, NASDAQ as the first time from an Indian company in uh, 2020 as well. And we put it all together with an ESG 2030 vision, which is really bringing together what is relevant for our business. We said we will educate 10 million kids in India uh, through digital technologies, opening up our internal libraries, really, which we use for our internal training to the wider you know, school and colleges uh, free of cost. Uh, tech for good, uh, of course, gender, we are one of the highest uh, in the world, you know, we are about 39% of our workforce of 260,000 people are women, and we've taken a target to really go towards 45 and then to 50%. So these are the things that we continue to strive towards, uh, and that's what keeps us uh, really going. Lots of more work done, and really, we are very proud to see uh, where we've come in the journey ahead. But Lanjan, I want to understand the use of technology and how technology can really play an important role in the ESG transition of many of the companies and the businesses as well as the sectors that you cater to as Infosys and the IT solutions that you provide. Thanks. That's a very, very important uh, question, Nisha. And I think digital transformation and helping our clients in the digital transformation journey is at the core of what we do. Uh, and there's billions and actually billions and billions of dollars being spent around this. But I think the realization with our clients and which also is what we are positioning ourselves with the clients is that sustainability now has to be part of the design phase of your digital transformation, right? It cannot be an afterthought or sitting somewhere outside the core business strategy. So we have actually launched sustainability as a practice, which we offer services on sustainability to our clients, uh, ESG as a service, uh, carbon platform, a circular blockchain economy and really from ab initio into the pitches which we do with our clients is actually bring sustainability into the thinking. That's right, Nilanjan. What a great account you gave. And innovation is the cornerstone of the solutions for uh, really uh, embedding ESG in uh, the systems worldwide as well. So that's a very important point. Uh, but Vivek, I want to ask you why we are talking about uh, the climate consciousness already the topic of greenwashing is coming in so there's clearly a trust deficit and that then again leads us to the corporate governance and the best practices standards that the companies need to keep what is it that the companies need to embed in their overall system to be in the highest standards of the g part of esg uh, i think every company and organization needs to first decide what is the target and what is the objective that we are trying to achieve? And then use that as a lighthouse, I would say, to make sure that all the other operational decisions that you actually make, uh, given the constraints of resources and technology and the other factors, are working towards that singular objective that you want to achieve. Um, a few other things, um, you know, frankly, just having, you know, the, the actual policies and procedures in place, communicating these policies and procedures to the largest shareholders, stakeholders, so that they know that these things are in place. And whenever there are any strategic decisions, capital allocations, portfolio allocations, the ESG component is kept in mind and integral to that decision-making process as opposed to kind of viewed standalone or separately. But Nilanjan, you have been following the global standards and that is exemplary for a lot of the domestic companies which are just embarking on the ESG journey here. What is the next step forward? Give us a little sense on where the world is moving on ESG. And with that, Infosys is also uh, marching ahead on that particular front. And what will be some of the learnings that you want to share with those companies who are just initiating this particular process? You need to create value for all those stakeholders, right? You cannot just say this company exists for the sole source of creating shareholder value creation. So it has to be beyond that into you know employees it has to be around the uh, community it has to be on environment etc so it, that, that's a fundamental realization so that's number one 
I think number two is that if you see the the if if you don't follow a ESG sort of a routine, right? The government is going to take you there. So regulations are coming very very fast. So you will be pushed to that regime any case. So it's better to be ahead of that curve. So as you know, BRSR is coming in from 2022 into India, and that from 2023 it will be mandatory across. Uh, and there's separate regulations there. But I think the yeah. most important is what is happening inside the company. Do you, you fundamentally realize that sustainability has to be integrated into your business model, right? It cannot be sitting outside your business model. It has to seep into everything you do every day, right? And therefore, you see that in across the world, right? Oil and gas companies, how they're moving to renewables. You're seeing the whole automobile shift sector shifting towards EV. You're seeing consumer goods going into moving away from single reuse plastic. So really, these are tectonic shifts which change your entire you know, strategic focus of the company. And I think that's where it has to come from, that this can't be something as and also to be done. Right. It has to be yeah. inane. It has to be right inside your business model, your risk model. And therefore, it's not something that you, you think about separately. It's what you do on a daily basis. I must say that uh, the sustainable journey is a long journey on which one needs to embark early. And also in terms of realization, one aspect that Nilanjan mentioned, but there is also motivation coming in if overall ecosystem demands it and shareholders and the markets attach higher valuations for the companies which have clearly embedded higher corporate governance standards. With that, uh, I thank both of you, Nilanjan as well as Vivek, for a very interesting conversation on a very important topic that uh, we are faced with right now that is on better governance in the companies all across as they embark on their ESG journey. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. And thanks to all our viewers for tuning in.